in the UK, there was a problem that to have to handle all the television channels. For example, if you were watching the old Astra 2D, she had 92 transponders on them, on it, each carrying up to four TV channels. And if you want to see the listing, you're welcome to come out and read all the frequencies and all the listings. And I do this because people think only one signal comes off the, off the, the satellite, but we are, when we're engineering the satellite dishes to look into the sky, we have to make them look at 92 transponders some are on horizontal channeling, some are on vertical channeling, then there's what they call custom carriers and everything else to engineer to get it right. So if you want to come and see well, what frequency the channel you watch most is on, it's in that listing. Anyway, so along came uh, the, the replacement for uh, the, the, the system because what was happening in the UK, there was too much channeling on, a, an, on an individual satellite. So having launched now... 2F, and this created a problem for you all last December, didn't it? When Channel 5 disappeared. Yeah. Because what they did was they launched this satellite, put it into its new location, and they said, right, Channel 5 goes over, 5 USA, 5 Star, a few others, and they're now on that satellite. And because of its modern technology and it's aimed at Great Britain, it has a much smaller footprint. So say goodbye to Channel 5 at the moment, we can't receive it. It's just one of those things and a few others as well. So there that is now sitting in its natural orbit, and the trouble is, we can't see it, and that is the truth. Now, there are some engineering problems, because obviously they transferred all those channels over, and it's not noticeable in Great Britain. If you're in Great Britain with the satellite receiver on, you wouldn't have even noticed it. Overnight, the programs will be downloaded, move channels, and the box just identifies them and moves. But the problem with this is now that we need another satellite to fill the gap. Now, these satellites are stacked. That's what they call them. Now they have to be between 5 and 10 kilometres apart up there. Now what we're hoping is, in the future, there is a new satellite to be launched. And its date planned is currently the 19th of July. Now, if I told you that this, this launch of this satellite was originally January, then it was March, then it was May, and now it's July, you can see what's happening. And everybody's panicking. The current launch date is the 19th of July, which is going up on an, uh, a rocket uh, from um, Kazakhstan, and it's a Soyuz rocket, and that is the plan at the moment. However, if you go onto their website for Astra, they'll, t they'll already tell you they're having trouble with the rocket boosters on the, on the launch vehicle, they're having trouble with the um, moving uh, rocket boosters that go on the satellites, because these satellites don't just sit there, their orbit decays and everything else. In fact, anybody ever went to, anybody ever live in Surrey? Yes. University of Surrey steers a lot of these satellites for Astra and gets paid huge amounts of money into the university coffers. Uh, and if you go to the University of Surrey, you'll see all these dishes all around steering different satellites for people. Anyway, we have 2F up there, and she's sitting up there, and the next satellite to be launched is 2E. Now this is where the plan changes. See why I made up all these little satellites? They're not actually round. Funny enough, they're square. If you ever see them on the ground, most of them are square. So here we go. Here's two Astra 2F, which we can't see at the moment. 19th of July arrives in orbit 2E. Now the thing about 2E is, what's got to happen is, the signals have got to be transferred from that one end to 2E and it will take up to six weeks to engineer this satellite in its new orbit. Now, as we've already said, <coughs> five to ten kilometres apart, they're stacked so they're behind each other or in front of each other depending which way they go around. We're not sure which way around they're going to go yet until it's steered properly. But they're all on the same actual bearing. Now, the thing about stacking satellites is five kilometres up there means what on the ground? Huge amount of distance, doesn't it? And what we're hoping is that if she arrives in an orbit 5 to 10 kilometres away from 2F, we may be able to carry on as we are in May. Although the signals are likely to be weaker because of the trajectory of the, the transponders and everything else. But uh, people are saying, oh, I'm going to need a bigger dish or I'm going to need to move my dish to another location or something like that. Well, you can't. The truth of it is, in, in the location already for 2F, we've tried 3.1 metres 
you're looking at 13 odd feet. The trouble is with that too, you need, for the ground-based engineering, you need one and three quarter metres deep of concrete to take its four inch support and a one metre by one metre base of concrete and you can't put that on a roof because it would blow your roof off. So we're, we're in that sort of predicament at the moment. What we're saying to people, be patient. Now, uh, alright, there's a lot about internet TV going on at the moment. We're saying to people, be patient because there is some, uh, some things up our sleeve that we may be able to get away with. First of all, not all the satellites that I've shown you today carry all the channels you are watching. For example, how many people use Humax systems here? Humax HD boxes, yeah? Right, now you get your custom carrier. I have to explain the custom carrier. All those signals and television channels coming off the satellite, they, they arrive at your, your box in the ground through your dish, and they're converted to produce the picture. But there is one other channel that you never probably, probably see or will ever see unless you look at the meter when you're setting the satellite dish up. And if you ever see us doing it, ask us and we'll show you. But it's what is called a custom carrier. Now that is the, the, the signal that comes down from the satellite to tell the box how to behave. How many people use sky systems? Sky boxes. When you turn your sky box on and you put TV guide up, background audio comes on. You get a little song singing yeah. along for your background audio. <clears throat> and when you see searching for listings, you'll see a clock and it says date and time. All those are provided by the custom carrier. Because what happens is, when the transponders change channel, uh, you don't have to, as you do with some of the earlier boxes, oh gosh, you've got to retune the whole box, you know, and, tell it and set it up again. Because what happens is with the modern boxes, they understand that they're getting the telemetry down the custom carrier, and the custom carrier retunes the box. So when a channel changes frequency, you don't even know it's done it. It still appears in the same place on the same channel number and everything else, but it's actually changed frequency as we know it. So that's where we are with satellites at the moment. Key to it is, as I was going to say, those Humax boxes get their custom carrier from Eurobird. Eurobird is not moving. Okay? Now we're hoping, and as Tom and I are having our final discussion this morning before this discussion, is that Eurobird is not planned to be moved. She's quite young. She's got at least five or six years of life left in her. She'll probably see us out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if it's transmitting, we'll still get a few few channels. Okay, we may miss some of the BBC channels and the ITV channels and I can hear some of the ladies packing their bags already because Coronation Street and EastEnders will be there, but the point is we, we will probably have some TV. What are the alternatives? Okay, well some of the alternatives are, and a lot of people are talking about internet TV. Can I tell you, be very, very, very careful about internet television. I know people already that have been out and they've been swayed by all the adverts and the newspapers and the magazines. You can pay up to 300 euros for the installation and then you can start paying 30 euros a month and everything else. Now I've had several companies put the phone down on me because I say, well okay you've supplied the box for 300 euros and the people have signed a contract and they're paying 30 euros a month. What are they paying the 30 euros a month for? Have you considered that? Because they're supplying you with free TV yet they're charging you 30 euros a month. And they can't answer the question. And when you dig deeper as Tom and I will often do, the phone goes clunk because they can't come up with the answer. Because first of all, it's not like Sky, for example, where you've got a card and if you stop paying your subscription, they cut you off, don't they? Oh, it's not in the bank. Okay, just switch them off. They'll get back in touch with us and switch it back on again. But with those systems, they're free TV, so why are you paying that 30 euros a month? We, we as a company have always advocated, we'll supply you with pay TV if you want it, and it's quite simple, buy a skybox from us, buy a contract from us, pay through a UK bank, blah, blah, blah. But one of our, we've always said is, we'll give you as much free TV as we can, so you don't have to pay monthly. We're all pensioners. I'm officially a pensioner from January last. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. What should you do? Okay. First of all, the internet companies are saying, and Broadband for Spain, for example, which we speak to quite often, uh, Riosat, Iberband, and people like that, they're saying they're very concerned that everybody will switch to 
um, internet TV because there is something simple. Everybody considers it's the speed and all the adverts say 2 megabits per second and that will get you the TV. But what the major problem is, is nothing to do with the speed, it's what they call bandwidth. Now if you can imagine when a signal travels from one location to another, it has a certain amount of bandwidth. And the easiest way to explain it is, if I took that glass from Dorothy there, which is about half a litre, and tried to put five litres down it, it ain't going to go, is it? And that's the problem. What happens in, say, for Camaras, 200 odd people living locally, all switch onto Coronation Street, half past eight local time, and the system dives, and it, and, it, and it won't come back up again. Why won't it come back up again? Well, it's simple logic. We, being human, don't turn our boxes off when something goes wrong. It's the same with the satellite receivers, don't we? The signal doesn't come and you leave it on, you think, oh, it'll be back in a minute, won't it? And with the internet service, of course, you leave your router switched on and your ADSL link switched on, and of course, it won't come back up again. So you're going to lose your email, your Skype, your telephone calls and everything. And if you talk to any of the major broadband providers here, they will tell you the same. They're very, very anxious about the business in broadband because they think it will collapse when uh, everybody starts to switch to television. Okay? So you've got to think about the way, way forward, how we're going to do it. What I would advise at this moment in time is to seriously, very seriously consider if you're going to replace your television to choose your television wisely. The televisions that are behind me now, the one on the right, for those of you who think you should be going back to Specsavers, don't worry, it's actually a 3D transmission, so you should have a pair of glasses on to watch it. And this on my left is an internet-ready television. Um, just, just a brief description, this television has a satellite receiver already built into it, and it will look at 25 different satellites if you tell it to. Uh, it also has a full internet service built into it, and although we can't get an internet service in here, it just has a wireless dongle stuffed in the back, like your, your portable computer where you take on your laptop, and it connects to the wireless lo situation locally and pro provides you with television. It has what they call a magic remote, and it will actually allow you to um, use a keyboard, bring up a keyboard and flash up all sorts of things as well. But you can do your Skype on it, you can do your emails on it, and all that sort of stuff as well. I know we're talking about internet, but uh, what I do advise people to do is look at the options that might be available. Because in the future, I'm pretty well certain that one of the things that will happen probably 10 years down the road from now, is that the broadband speeds will rise and the bandwidth that's supplied will be better because all the broadband providers are talking to the engineering networks and saying we need more bandwidth but unfortunately the Spanish are very reluctant to release bandwidth to the English companies and we don't know why that is at the moment I think they ought to play the old uh, I'm an Englishman in Spain and you can't do that to me card you know okay uh, I'll, I'll be quite brief now, just to make sure that I'm, I'm talking about the sort of things that you need. Besides having a satellite receiver in this television, it will also re read memory sticks. You can connect 101 different things to it. If you've still got VHS recorders, DVD players, all that sort of stuff, they will all be connected. How many people use memory sticks from their computers? You know, downloading films, right, where you can plug the, your memory sticks directly into the TV and they'll read them in any format and they will provide the films you've downloaded and so on and so on. Okay. Um, uh, finish off briefly then by talking about Spanish TV. How many people watch Spanish TV? Good for you, good for you. I would like to. Good. <laughs> because...